Welcome, welcome, welcome. Heavenly Father, what an anointing time we're having. We sense the Holy Spirit here. And we want to receive everything that you've got for us, dear God. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. So many things I'd like to just tell you about. You know, last Sunday I went to a KL church and I suddenly started to feel very, very hot. But everybody else were freezing. And uh, I went to the guys and I said, are all the aircon on? They said, yeah, all the aircon on, very cold. But I was pouring in sweat, literally. I was thinking, what was going on? Then I began to think for a little while what I had for breakfast. I normally, <laughs> I normally have my normal breakfast. I take my eggs or whatever it is. But that morning, you know, I was taking my stuff. And, and my wife said, have some brand's essence of chicken. It'll give you strength. And, you know, anybody give me a drink, I'll have a drink. You know, just, I drank it. I tell you, I started pouring in sweat. And uh, so that was a funny experience. It was very funny when I said it in KL, but here it's not very funny. <laughs> it's okay. But, uh, all right. I hope you're all excited about the church, the building fund, and all that's going on. Those of you, you are thinking about how are we going. I promise we'll tell you a report. But I really want to appreciate the team, Yenny and Taizo and uh, Stefan uh, and James and uh, who else is there? Yeah, and these people have been working behind the scenes. You don't see a lot of things going on. But I, I want you to know that we love you. We are doing this because we love God and we love you. So we want you to continue to get behind it. By the grace of God, we will finish that KL building by Christmas. And uh, so we will finish it by Christmas and we will move in there. And I always will tell Taizo, look at him, the Japanese guy. I will always tell him, Taizo, no pressure, no pressure, but I want it ready by December. <laughs> but uh, I thank God that they have a sense of humor, you know. And I want to just say something. When Yeni was sharing just now, I felt the Holy Spirit said in my heart that... Uh, you know, our government and the financial laws in our government and not just the financial laws, all kinds of laws, they keep shifting the goalposts. Now you must do this, then they change and they change and they change. And sometimes you don't know whether you are behind your taxes or who's cheating you in the office and why are they angry at you for no reason? Did I miss something? Did I not smile when I say good morning? Or what did I do wrong? I want you to know that when you are a tither, when you are saying, I want to be faithful to God, and to God, I will always be true. I want to put God first. Very simple. You don't have to know your theology. You don't have to be a deep Christian. You just have to know, like what we sang just now, thank you, Jesus, for your grace, and you love God. Let me just, I felt the Holy Spirit say, tell them, I will cover their back. Amen. That when many things happen in the world, and when people want to take advantage of you, don't worry about it. I have got you covered. And uh, I just wanted to obey the Holy Spirit, so I told you that. And uh, so I'm going to share the Word of God. Today I want to talk to you about something I pray will challenge you and then will we'll change your mindset. Next week we are having Pastor Eric Harrison here in the church. He has just come back from a world tour. And uh, he's just doing a wonderful job. He's our area supervisor. He looks after us in the sense that if we've got any kind of things to share, we will share with him. The other day, we were having lunch with uh, Pastor Phil Pringle, which was a rare treat. And uh, he's really a nice guy. And, and I said to him, Pastor, thank you for, you know, taking time out on his busy schedule. And he said, no, Joe, the, the, the pleasure is all mine. I feel so happy. And he was just so happy with our C3 churches because, you know, we're not trying to impress anybody. You know, we, we're not trying to impress the Matsale, you know, uh, just because they are white, we try to talk. No, 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 this is who we are. This is our country, Malaysia. And we are reaching people for the kingdom of God. But one of the things he asked me, and uh, I felt really embarrassed. He said, uh, Joe, what do you think is the answer? Uh, what do you think is the answer? And all the other C3 pastors were there. What do you think is the answer in reaching Malaysia for Jesus? <laughs> and I looked at him and I just did this. <laughs> I, said, I don't know. And he clapped his hand. Because a lot, of, you know, when you first graduate from Bible college and you study and you pass and you're ready with your Bible, you have all the answers. 
to everybody's problem, to every question that nobody is asking. <laughs> and you feel you will do a wonderful thing, and that's a good way to start. Now, that doesn't mean that now I'm old, I don't know anything. But the older I get, I realize that the source of my strength is my relationship with God. Just a simple walk with Him, listen to Him, say, God, I'm sorry, I blew it again, I'm so stupid, but thank you anyway for choosing me and walk closely with Him and walk closely with God. And I tell you, you will become very strong that everywhere you go, you will have favor with God and favor with men. And, uh, and, and I, 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 I didn't know what to say. I could have said, well, I think uh, if we know how to use the Facebook, if we know how to get as many photos as we can on Instagram and get as many people to like us, or if we will walk to the street, if we will witness and give out tracts, and if we could talk to uh, the drunkards and the prostitutes, and if we would form a new committee, that I've done all that. And I realized there's still much to be done. And we will continue to do all that. But I believe that the, that the real strength behind our Christianity is God. Otherwise, we're just doing religion. Do this, do that, stand up, sit down. Don't say this, don't say that. But it's a relationship that we develop with God. Can you say amen? amen. I hate religiosity. I hate religion. You know, don't do this. This is wrong. I, I, I cannot. I, I just want to be free in Christ. Amen. Free in Christ and be all that God wants me to be. This is a funny subject. The benefits of an adversary. I mean, who wants to have an adversary? An adversary means an opponent, an enemy. Now, I'm not saying that we as Christians should go out and make enemies. God forbid. The Bible says, do all you can to be at peace with everybody, the Bible says. You know, in other words, try to be at peace. There will be people who will never want to be at peace with you. You can't do a thing. Anything you do will be misinterpreted as bad. So, you can't win them. But try, the Bible says, to be at peace. However, did you realize, everybody look at me, I want you to think now. I know some of you come to church and you think when I come to church, pastor will do all the thinking, he will give all the answers, <laughs> and I don't have to think at all. Now, I want you to think that when God made the earth, the earth was perfect, right? Of course, he said, let there be light, let there be the stars, let there be an all of it. And everything he made was good. And then he made man and the woman, and he put them in the garden, and he said, it is very good. But did you realize that before everything was very good, there was already an adversary in the garden? Did you realize there was already a serpent, an enemy, an adversary in the garden while it was perfect? Think about that. Why did God put that snake in the garden? Like somebody said, you know, if Adam and Eve were Chinese, there would be no sin because they would have eaten the snake, you know. <laughs> but why was there an adversary? Did you think about that? Because you will never become strong. You will never really succeed in the way God wants you to succeed. You will never enjoy the many benefits if there was no opponent. You will never know what it is to be successful. What did you succeed in? You succeeded because you overcame a failure. Are you with me? So when you have an adversary, then you overcome that adversary. And you struggle, you think, you pray, you fast, you change your attitude, you begin to adjust your lifestyle, Slowly you move away, it is now no more. It was a big opponent. I want you to think about that. Think about this. Problems create movement. If you do not move, your present will become permanent. Let's say if you are struggling with health. Oh, I'm always sick, I'm always sick, I'm always sick. Well, how do you want to overcome? You want to tell everybody and get people to feel sad for you? Or do you want to break that sickness? So what do you do? You call up your connect group. You see, now you start moving. Everybody pray for me and everybody goes, yes, we'll pray for you. 
Doctor says you need to cut down on your sugar. You start cutting down your sugar. You pass by the fridge and the ice cream call you, come to me, come. No, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm going to diet. You walk by and it's afternoon. You know, I, I've been through all of this. And it's lunchtime. And the Indian curry in Kana Curry House is calling you, come la, come la, yella sabadu, nice rice, steamy rice. And you know, doctor said, okay, you can only eat a little bit, but not too much. When that fellow comes, you want to say chukup, you pretend don't see them. So what happens? You start cutting down, you start going to the gym. Like Noel said, he has started to work out now, but it lasted 10 minutes. His shoe, which he bought, he's got the pad that is there to listen to music. He's gelled his hair up, he's got the tights on, the spandex, his sleeveless t-shirt, he's ready to jog. Then his daughter fell down and had a cut, that was the end of the exercise. Now, he is going back to that. And let me tell you, it, your, your whole body will say, hey, enough, la. enough. La. Then you start saying, I'm going to do 12 minutes. Then you start, I'm going to do 15 minutes. You are overcoming an adversary. Then you see the results. Then you start looking really shapely like Kenny or one of these. Real Steven, nice shape, muscular, tough tank. He's a muscle-bound man. All I'm saying is that your problems are meant to create you to move. If you don't have the wisdom to re realize, why am I going through this in the office? Or how come this persecution is coming in my family? Or why is the church going through? The, because God is saying there is an opponent, there's an opponent, there's an adversary. Fight the thing. Now, we don't fight with people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But many times, in fact, 90% of our problems are with people. And I'll tell you why. But people are not the enemy. Everybody say people are not the enemy. Right. They are just the victim of the enemy. In other words, sometimes the enemy uses people. Remember, if Israel didn't have Pharaoh... To beat them some more, they would not have cried out to God and they would not have had a deliverance and had miracles and go into the promised land. None of that would have happened because they were all comfortable Jews. They sat down, they had their Passover meal, they ate their lamb once a month, they were given some bread, they could enjoy a little bit of Israeli celebrations for 400 years. That's what they enjoyed. It became permanent lifestyle. That's how I did it. That's how my daddy lived like that. My mama lived like that. I'm a slave. My father was a 400 years. My father's a slave. We were addicted. We were bound. We were scolded. We were told what to do, when to do, when, how to do. We took that for 400 years. Then God turned up the heat a little bit. Now Pharaoh says, I want my economy to double or I will kill you. And he starts beating them. When the problem came, they start praying. When they start praying, God said, okay, I hear your cry. Now I will send a deliverer called Moses. And because of the problem called Pharaoh, Israel left slavery that their fathers were for 400 years, they broke out of the present and moved into their future. These are the benefits. Everybody say benefits. benefits. So never look at your problems and say, I thought, you know, when we go to the promised land, it's flowing with milk and honey. Yes, it was. There were houses that were built that they didn't build. There were vineyards that were planted with grapes. The Bible says two men had to carry the fruit to show Moses. One person here, one person at the back, and a big cluster of... Hey, all our grapes are small, little biji, like that, Neil. Our angor, like that. Okay? In a promised land, one was like that. And they came carrying the fruit. And they said the land is flowing with milk and honey, but there are giants there. 
We thought we'll all, you know, come out of Egypt. I say, walk into the promised land, like the sound of music. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Suddenly, big giant with an ugly nose, four eyes, 11 foot tall, standing there. I'm going to eat you. And God said, fight those giants. Because the land I have already given you. But you must take it. That's why it's called an inheritance. You have to inherit it. If your father, let's say, I'm just saying, was Bill Gates. And you are a Gates. You're Gates Jr. And he left everything to you. The boats in Florida... Uh, the aeroplanes in Chicago, the penthouse in New York, the beautiful villa in the Bermudas, all this is yours. When I die, you can have it all. Will you say, never mind, I'll just take the boats, the rest all, I, I really you know, don't need so much. You will say, what's mine is mine. Now, your heavenly father has given you every good gift in Christ. But he said, you must take it. You want healing? Fight for it. You want deliverance? Claim it. You want salvation of your loved ones? You fight tooth and nail, not against people in arguing and debating, but in prayer, in quoting the word, basic things, declare the word of God, walk your room and say, oh my God, this is happening. There's an adversary standing against me, but I will take that giant down. You've got to fight. Now, you might say, that's not my nature. Well, change. Because the Bible says, in Ephesians chapter 6, this is what the Bible says. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can we move on to the next verse? No, not those verses. Not those verses. The, the same thing in Ephesians. Now you go to verse uh, 13. Verse 13. Verse 13. Okay? He says, therefore, take up the whole arm of God. Now, why would God want you to be armored if there isn't a fight to fight? Huh? He can just say, wear pajamas. Never mind. After all, you can just hallelujah. You know, some people, listen to me, look at me. Going to church is not warfare. Going to church is easy. You brush your teeth, you shave. Some of you don't, but you put on nice clothes. You come to the church, aircon turned on for you. Somebody to sing for you. Somebody to speak. Somebody to pray for you, and you go home and have lunch. That's warfare. <laughs> huh? Sometimes it is harder to go and watch a football game because you have to line up, people are pushing, you find your seat, it is so hard. My friend in, 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 uh, told me that he went to a football match in Europe, in Croatia or something. He said, I was sitting there, it was minus 12 degrees, but it was Packed. He said, Joseph, I had inside thermal underwears, outside underwears, inside, outside clothes, coats, so many. I said, I was so covered, but I was still freezing my butt off when I sat there to watch a football match. They were willing to suffer. I was thinking, you're mad. You can watch it on TV at home. <laughs> huh? Going to church is easy. Going home after church and facing the real adversaries, that's warfare. And you are going to face them, whether you're married or single, whether you like it or not. This is what I wrote in my notes. Enemies unlock your imagination. I want to I show you this. But we, we just, now, this video didn't come from Charisma or Hillsong or C3 Praise and Worship video. No, no. This one is from YouTube. Here's the story. This black woman, she had her house burnt down. And the way she talked, she's just a normal American, you know, American black. And the way she talked, 
But somebody, Hassan, took her report in the, in, the, in the news and probably passed it to one of his music friends. And it hit over many times millions of listeners. And she's now so popular on Oprah Winfrey's show. She's on television and news. Because of a tragedy, it created somebody's imagination. Watch this. I hope you like this. The president describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. <laughs> then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. And then the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. According to the apartment manager, the fire started in a woman's home who is wheelchair bound. She was treated for smoke inhalation at a local hospital. There were no other reports of injuries. The Red Cross is helping those families displaced by the fire. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, I woke up to go give me a cold pop. Then I thought somebody was barbecuing. 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 I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. takes that and makes it a video and she's popular change her hairstyle and all that she's a, everybody knows that so what I'm trying to say is that your enemies will unlock your imagination it will expose your weakness because you don't realize that you are weak in some area maybe your attitude you know and, and then suddenly your loved one says to you I cannot stay at home with you anymore goodbye oh, why is this thing happening ain't nobody got time for this Okay, then all of a sudden you realize, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I need to change, I need to, you didn't realize, it built up and built up and built up. So, the enemy really creates something that forces us to change before we can see success. Maybe you used to worry a lot, and maybe now your husband testifies to everybody. You know, she was a worrier, a warrior, not a warrior, a worrier. And every time she would be worrying, small thing happened in the house. Worry, 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 worry. Then she's been coming to church and she's been hearing the word of God and, and her mind has been renewed. And today she just prays the Lord. Everything she just says, don't worry, God will take care. And my wife is totally changed. I pray we will hear real life testimonies like that. Or a woman would say, my husband's a grumbler. Every time grumble, every time criticize, nag, 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 like an old fart. But now, everything, he praises God. He's very positive. Now, we pray that all the bad things that are happening in your life will, for, will cause you and force you to become a better fighter. They say that the people that ride those bulls, how many of you have seen the rodeos, you know, 
They get points for how long, not only how long they stay on the bull. I mean, these bulls are bad. They are mean, you know, they are real monsters, these Brahmin bulls. And they sit there and they take points. And they say, the badder the bull, the more points you get. When people do athletics and when they do the, the dives, the more they do the spins, the harder the stunts that they do, they score more points. So in life, if you are struggling with what you are not happy with today, it's simply because when the problems came, you refused to overcome them. Maybe it was an anger attitude that's constant and you just allow it. That's just me. No, it's not you. You're a child of God. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. We can change. We're not perfect. Oh, well, my parents were like that. No, you're not taking after your parents' nature. You're taking after the nature of Jesus Christ. We can change if you want to change. Well, I'm all, you know, my parents were always living under poverty. You, you can stop it right there. You can say to, to that poverty adversity, it stops right here. Me, my children are going to prosper in God. We're going to do well. We're not going to be stingy. We're not going to be having a poor person's mindset. We're going to be a blessing. We're going to be so blessed by God. So, this is what someone once said. The greater the adversary, the greater the reward. David faced a lion, killed a lion. Small adversary, but of course it's huge for us. He saw a wolf, killed a wolf. And in one day, from being a shepherd boy, he marries the king's daughter, lives in the palace, and is loved by all of Israel, that till today, when God had seven kings after David, every one of the kings God compared to David, not because David was the best, or the most holy, or the most qualified, but because David was a man after God's heart. But it happened on one day, just one day, when he faced the biggest adversary of his life, Goliath. And that one day, he took that giant out. He didn't run from it, he ran towards the giant, he faced that giant, and so from shepherd boy to king's house, and of course he suffered a lot in between, because he didn't, you know, you can run away from your problems. Joseph is another example. Joseph was a very likable boy. His daddy liked him so much. But the problem he had was he had these dreams. And that's not a problem, but he began to tell his brothers his dreams. And that became a problem. Sometimes when you get all these dreams, you know, you, you, you start telling people about it and people get jealous. Everybody say jealous? jealous. Yeah. Jealous is a terrible spirit to have at home, in your marriage, or in the church. And there are people who are jealous. They cannot see somebody else doing well. Somebody buys a new car, celebrate with them. Say, man, that is so cool. That's a beautiful car. That's a beautiful house. Look at, I've done that so many, I've gone to people's home. Whether it's a small house that they put up a new cupboard up there and they put all their decals which were previously lying on the floor. But now, I celebrate with people. I go to houses that are mansions. I've been in America where I stayed up on the mountains and the place was overlooking and right down they had the whole valley. They owned it. There were black bears that were walking outside the house. I've stayed in long houses like and I rejoice with them don't get a jealous spirit and David uh, Joseph's brothers were jealous of him sometimes you hear even that in church you don't need to see that in the world you know Christians doing well you hear people criticizing Joel Osteen for example how many of you heard of Joel Osteen he is one of the nicest preachers you can ever hear but you know even he when he talks to pastors he says sometimes in a month or two months, a thousand people will leave his church. They will just find something wrong with him. Oh, his doctrine is too shallow, or he smiles too much, and he gets up there and he says, I just love you all, and he squints. You know what that spirit is? They're just jealous. If they had the success that he and his daddy had, John Osteen was a very successful pastor, if they had half Oh, his doctrine is so shallow. He's not really preaching the word like I'm preaching the word. And you know, you get that. Even in Christianity, 
And I'm saying right now to, to every one of us, don't you be envious of somebody other's home, somebody other's well-being. Let's celebrate and rejoice with them. Amen? Now, I don't think you've got time for that. To be jealous of other people. No, this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. He said, a wide door. In other words, many opportunities. A great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. God bless me. Okay? He'll put an adversary there. You've got to deal with it. And you don't have to be afraid because when God put an opportunity to promote you and when he put the adversary there, you don't have to get negative and, you know, defensive. You just have to trust God because, and don't be afraid. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, he says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. But God, you said you gave us an inheritance. You said to your God that, yes, he said, I will give you a land flowing with milk and honey. But you've got to put on the whole armor. You've got to get ready for a fight. Don't fight with people. But fight the issues. Fight the addiction. How many of you have heard of so many stories in the newspaper of great sports stars and, and entertaining stars and people who are so successful? And I believe their success was not only their hard work and their talent, it was a gift from God. Because all good things come from God. Can you agree with that? All good things. And then you realize the person got caught for, you know, something or jailed or beat up his girlfriend or some stupid thing. And then goes in jail, six, seven years later, he's released from jail. Now nobody wants him and the papers come out. What could have been with this young man? What could have been with so many Christians that could be leaders, that could be people who were pioneering something, creating something, but they allowed that attitude to go on and they love to just pick and fight and compare and finally people just get tired of them and leave them and they fall on the wayside and other people move forward and they look at that person. What could have been? You could have been one of the key people that created a movement in Klang. You could have been involved in that Sunday school, that, that youth meeting, that connect group. What could have been? Years passed by. Too bad. All right? But God is a merciful God. Can you say amen? But he will give you many opportunities. A great and effective door is open to you. Okay? So, Jesus said this in Matthew 13. Verse 27 to 30, Jesus said, So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have tares or weeds? How come? And Jesus said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? Go and pull out all the thorns, you know, all the, all the weeds. Um, and Jesus said, No. Because while you gather up the, the thorns and the tares, the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. So let them both grow together until the harvest. The time will come. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares, bind them in bundles, and burn them. So here are the words of Jesus. He said, don't do anything to those things that are growing beside you. God, please deal with that person. God, please take that person away. God, No, God, Jesus said, I'm going to allow both to grow together. I planted the good seed, but the enemy came immediately. You find that the enemy will come the moment your prophecy, your anointing is declared over you. God has spoken to you. You know that God wants to bless you. Immediately, the enemy will come and also speak against you. So God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, verse 17. God said, I'm going to bless you and multiply you. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens and as the sands of the seashore. And this is what God says. And your descendants shall, listen, possess the gates of the enemy. You got to go there and say, you are in my property. You're holding my brother in addiction or my sister in a rebellion. Uh, you're holding this family. I am coming against you. Now, Christian, that's how we are supposed to behave. 
You look that enemy in the eye and you say, I'm not afraid of what you're doing. That's how I used to pray for my father, my, my natural father who's gone to be with the Lord. When he was a Hindu, he was very, he was very moderate. Ah, he didn't care. He had Christmas parties. He used to... Once we all got saved, me and my brothers, my sisters, started getting saved, going to church. He moved from being this to the other extreme real fast. And I used to come into his bedroom many times when he wasn't looking. And I would lay my hand on my father's pillow where he lied down. Because he didn't want to talk to me. He thought I'd become a fanatic. I lay my hand on my father's pillow and I'll say, God, Jesus, every time he puts his head down, speak to him. I pray across his room, oh, Holy Spirit, come and invade my father's bedroom. Touch him. And he became more and more and more and worse and worse and worse and more religious. I kept fighting the thing. I went and prayed for his coffee cup. When he drinks his coffee, speak to him. I prayed on his sarong. I became crazy. His favorite sarong. Father, touch him, dear God. And you know, he ended up in my church when we pioneered this church years and years ago. I baptized my own father when he believed in Jesus Christ. You gotta fight the thing. In Jesus' name, you gotta say, This is, he says, you must possess. You are the descendants of Abraham. You're supposed to be great. You fight this thing in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says this. Because sometimes you say, Pastor, I cannot take this anymore. Of course you can. Watch God do miracles, but I cannot stand it. In the Bible, you're saying God's a liar? It says, no temptation has overtaken you such as is common. Everybody say, God is faithful. He will not allow you. To be tempted beyond. Are you reading that? Are we reading the same Bible now? That's the question. Come on, talk to me. Are we reading the same Bible? Yeah. Are we worshipping the same God? Now, just because Paul was able to say that and overcome, does that mean that he is more spiritual than you? He is an apostle, yeah? That's his office. That's his work. But he's a Christian just like you. He had to fight the demons just like you. He didn't have, God didn't love Paul more than he loves you. He loves you as much as he loved Paul. So don't look at this brother and this sister and say, wow, their faith is so strong. No, we are the same. And God will never, never, never ask you to do something he hasn't given you the power to do it. Amen. But if he didn't ask you to do something and you get involved in some kind of a problem, then God didn't ask you to do it, then you better pray for mercy and grace because you said you're going to do it. And that's why, that's why it's very important for us to realize that sometimes when God tells you to do something, make sure it's God. And the best way to know that God is telling you to do something is when you check it out with other Christians. Is this God or is this me? But if you can't listen to anyone, then you, you have to answer the consequence. Do you understand? You purposely go and date this fella, then you, you know, you, you, you stay with him. If you love me, he makes you do a lot of things. He'll tell you if you really love me. Then you do all that. Then you get beaten up and whacked and he abuses you and takes your money. And then you say, you know, I felt God. No, that wasn't God. That was your hormones. Ah. You drank too much of brand's essence of chicken. You got that already. Then could not whack nicely, pastor. You see, I thought, you know, I have many pastors prayed for us. and uh, No, no, no. God, God wasn't in it. Okay? So you need to walk with God. It's not difficult, guys. It's simple. It's so simple. Just walk with God. Put your pride aside. Stop saying, but I used to... Shut up. Nobody wants to know what you thought. Was. You walk with God. Holy Spirit will never allow you to be tempted above what you can endure. So if you're going through a big crisis like David, like Joseph, imagine if Joseph didn't have 
That kind of an adversary, he wouldn't be prime minister. Okay? His brothers beat him, sold him as a slave. From there, the Lord was with him. Now, Joseph didn't read the book of Genesis and read, and the Lord was with Joseph. We read, and we know the story. But he didn't know. He had to trust God by faith. Because every time you read about Joseph in prison, you know, Potiphar's wife, she liked this boy. He was so handsome. And she kept coming on to him, and he kept running and running and running. Finally, he couldn't stand it anymore. And guys, can I just say this? You know, we, we are all spiritual Christians. We can speak in tongues, but we all have the same kind of hormones. And the thing about guys is that we are, we are visual, uh, sorry, visual creatures. And the, when you see something and that thing is calling you, uh, run. Don't stand there and speak in tongues. Run. Joseph ran. Left his coat and everything. He didn't grab no shoes or nothing. Jesus, I ran. <laughs> right. So she accused him of rape. And uh, she told her husband, thrown in jail. 17 years he was forgotten. How would you like? Everything you did for God. And 17 years passed by. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. That's all he knew. The Lord was with Joseph. And then one day again, from prison to prime minister. Because he faced his adversary. He didn't sit down, suck his thumb and cry and smoke some marijuana. And I don't know what to do with my situation. Give me more tablets. I need to calm down. Uh, you ask my wife. We've been through a lot of rubbish in our lives. And we would sit down, hold hands, and quote the Bible. We're not spiritual. We didn't have anybody to call. You ask and see whether I sat down and think, I don't know what to do already. I want to give up the ministry. I don't know why after all I've done, I blessed them. I removed their idols. I baptized them. I even did all communion. We ate in our house together. And today, they just, I don't want to be a pastor anymore. Never once did I say that to my wife. I'll say, let's pray. No money. Let's thank God. Some of you young people need to have that, 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 that. You need to want a girlfriend, say, don't worry, you'll never live in a small house. <laughs> There'll always be food on the table. God will provide. We are tithers. We give our tithe. God will bless our children. I'm thankful to God. I'm not being boastful about that. I hate to people to even think, oh, well, pastor, you know, you, you must have some trick up your sleeve. There's nothing. I thank God for our three daughters. Now I thank God for my three grandsons and more to come in the future. I'm just very, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, is this real or not? Wake up, is this a dream? How can you be so good to us when you know all our weaknesses and nothing because I earned it, okay? So chill for those of you who say, oh, you're so, what? You prayed a lot, up. I said, no. I just walk with God. Let him do it, let him do it. You are the descendants of Abraham. Come on, people, come on. Possess the gates. Get in there and stay in the fight until you win. Walk on your enemies. Put on. The size of the attack reveals the size of the anointing. You know why Pharaoh wanted to kill the baby Moses? Not because he is a baby killer, but because he didn't see that Moses was just a baby. He saw Moses was coming as a deliverer. When the enemy attacks you, he doesn't see you just as a Chinese young boy or a Chinese girl or an Indian boy or just a nobody family. No, he sees you can be a church leader. You can be somebody who can be a Bible teacher. You can be a worship leader. You can be a connect group leader. You can lead people, pray. That's why he attacks you. Not because you're so handsome and your, your locks are so curly and, and your mascara is so nice. Not because you have a nice toot up when you walk like that. He doesn't care about you. But he knows what you are going to become and what you can be in Jesus' name. So he attacks you. So if it's a stinking attitude, nail it on the cross. I will not live, but Christ lives in me. I am crucified with Christ. Don't just wear a cross. Get on it and die. Amen. Amen. Die. That's not me. That's not me. God, I know there are better things. I feel I've made mistakes so many times. 
But I keep saying to myself, that's not really me. That's not really me. I'll overcome that. I'll get by it by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Let's move quickly. Uh, all right. I, I love this scripture. Let's read it in Acts chapter 13, and then I think it goes on. A lot of verses there. This is about when you are promoted by God and not promoted by men. Listen, some people are sent. Everybody say, some people are sent. And some people just went. So I hope whenever you are going to do something, you are sent. You didn't just get upset and went. Okay? Because if you get into a fighting ring and you're not prepared, you are going to get hammered. Okay, so Paul uh, uh, went out with Barnabas and all these guys. They didn't just go, oh, God spoke to me, or I had a dream, or I felt the anointing. No, they had elders lay hands on them, fasted and prayed, and sent them. So it says here, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, separate to me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work for which I've called them. Let's go on. Then Saul, who is actually called Paul, filled with the Holy... Eh? So far, sir. Okay. I read to you. You listen, all right? And while they were worshipping and fasting, the Holy Spirit... I want every verse for that. Set me apart, Barnabas and Saul. And then after they fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them off. And when they had gone through the whole isle as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Paul and Barnabas and sought to hear the word of God. But Eli Elimas, the magician, for that's the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from faith. All right, I love this. And Paul filled with the Holy Spirit. Not any spirit, eh? Holy Spirit. Looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil. <laughs> Paul's not very politically correct. Huh? He didn't say, brother, jangan kacau, brother. Aku Christian nak cakap sikit saja, brother. No, he pointed. He looked at him and he said, you son of a devil. Enemy of all righteous, uh, righteousness. Full of all deceit and villainy. Will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. And immediately, mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. A lot of people just want to go and do great stuff. You get into a battle ring, and people witchcraft. In our country, in our society, people are involved in all this kind of witchcraft, sorcery. They will put a curse on you. Oh, I just want to go here, pray for people, do this. Who sent you? If nobody sent you, stay in the church and grow. Can you say amen? amen? Right. Be teachable. Go to your connect group. Learn there. Oh, but I want to go. The... Who sent you? But when you're sent and when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will look at some of your adversaries and say, you're trying to stop me. You're the one creating all kinds of problems for my family, my, my, my wife, my children. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I stop you right here and right now and watch and see what God happens, what God does. Amen? You just stop that witchcraft. I'm stopping that witchcraft right now. You're coming and making my family fight all the time. That happened to you and your family. You're trying to bring them to my stronghold, my house. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I draw the bloodline. You cannot cross that. Some of you dads. Guys. You need to flex that muscle. Even no muscle in my mind. Just flex the stomach or suck it in. And say, I'm drawing the line. Don't sit down there. I don't know why this thing is happening. I don't know why this family. Be a man. Just say, I reject this. The blood is drawn here. You can't cross that bloodline. This is my family. Nobody touches. And any curse that comes here comes back on you in Jesus' name. Watch and see what happens. Amen? Amen. I, I pray for that boldness to come upon all you men. You want to touch my finances? I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. 
You want to curse my, the, the, the blessing of God? I send that back to you in Jesus' name. Now, again, we're not fighting flesh and blood. But many times the enemy, listen, the devil needs a body to manifest. Just like God needs a body to manifest. What did God do when he made Adam? He breathed his spirit into Adam. In the same way, when the enemy wants to use, wants to attack you, sometimes, I think 90% of the time, he would use somebody. They don't realize it. I'm not saying they're devil-possessed, but they're inspired. They're, 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 they're used by the enemy. And you need to recognize that and not get mad with the person and fight with them, but you just need to, in your heart, just say, I come against this spirit in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. Is this helping you at all? Okay, because I want you to claim your inheritance and recognize that there is a fight going on. But the Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. And if you don't know this, you'll be wondering, why these things happen? Why do bad things happen to good Christians? I'm just trying to be a nice Christian. Well, baby, you got to get up and have a fight. Chapter 10, verse 4 to 5 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down the strongholds. So you little sweetheart, you nice little soft-spoken, dainty little girl, you have more power in your little fingertip than all the powers of hell. When you pray in Jesus' name, and when you begin to say, God, this is an abuse, this is an attack, I reject this and I reject it in Jesus' name. And you stand your ground. And the enemy will have to leave you because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Remember, people are not your enemy. Now, God is always looking for a person like you. He can do it on his own, but God is saying, I want that girl. I want, and you've got to be, all you've got to do, you know, if there's anything that, that's happening in my life, it's because I, I say to God, I'm so weak. I'm so easy to fail, but I'm available. I'm here. I didn't run away. I didn't jump ship. I'm here, so use me. So in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, it says, So I sought for a man. Can I hear all the men say amen? amen? So I sought for a man among them. Why did he say among them? Because there were a lot of men, but few men, men. The rest were men, biologically, but not man-man. So we need some man-man around. I sought for a man among them that would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy, but I found none. That's a very, very sad note from God. I found none. All he wanted was a man. Why does God use some people and they get blessed? Because they're available. But I thought he was divorced four times already. How come God can bless him with a big house? I never even had a girlfriend. But he four times is divorced and he's living in a nice house because he was available. Maybe by the fourth time, he got smart and married a rich woman. Who knows? <laughs> but what's your problem? What is your problem? Right? Why are you jealous of him or her? How come God used them? They have so much of problems. And I've heard that people say that about Stella and I. Because they know that, that Stella is a problem. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> How can God use them? Ah, oh, Stella, you both look so ugly. Your children look so beautiful. I said, what? I said, I know, I know you feel terrible about your children, but you know what? I can't help it about your children because, you know, not my problem. No, people will say that. I wonder how come the C3 church, how, how, KL, not right. The tithe is so low, the giving, all the wealthy people left and went to the, away from the church because the pastor is taking all the money from the church and buying a house in Glen Marico <laughs> and living so lavishly. Nice coat, belt, shoes. See, how can we support this ministry? 
And now, how can they want to buy a building? Ha 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 God will look at you and say, I'm looking for a man. I'm looking for a woman. And you need to say, here am I. Here am I with all my faults, with all my weaknesses. Here am I. Please use me, God. Let my one life on this earth count for your glory. So I don't live it selfishly and leave nothing in the name of Jesus, but I will leave something, an inheritance, that people will know that I was here in Jesus' name. Well, 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 let me finish this message. I think it's time for you to go and have lunch. But God wants us to deal with these things. I'm just passing by. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, it's okay, is it? I just talked to you like having coffee, eh? yeah? Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, it says this. In verse 9 and 10. Chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is, yeah. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities than the power of God may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches. We Christians, modern Christians think that blessing means I'm wealthy, I'm comfortable, no problems, you know. No sickness, no problems, no disturbance, no fights, no quarrels, everything. That is the process. Of course, we all want that. And God does give us all that. He brings His peace in the midst of problems. He brings His strength in the midst of weakness. He brings victory in the, sen- in the presence of enemy and battle. So Paul says, really, when... I look like I'm going to fall and it's going to crush me. It's when that moment when I'm weak, I become strong. Don't mess with a person who's got nothing else to live for but God. That's why one person, a missionary in a very, very hostile country, where they said, you know, they were going to kill him. The strength of the enemy was, we will kill you and burn your church down. That's our strength. That's our weapon. The man says, my strength and my weapon is, I'm not afraid to die. What do you do with a person like that? No more fun, ready. He's not, he don't, no problem. I will continue to do the work of God. You go ahead, kill me, whatever, love me, leave me. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead. You can't touch a person who has got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You can't fight with a guy who has nothing to lose and everything to gain. You fight with a fellow like that. Let's say a fellow who's a better fighter, but he's got his looks, his reputation, and all of that. You fight with a street fighter, that fellow got nothing. No kung fu, no martial art. He just hunt on you. He get whacked, face get bashed up. He comes up to you, he whack you until you scared really. Until your nose like this and island. This fellow don't care. His face is already like that. He walks also like that. I fought with people like that when I was young. They got nothing to, to lose. I had all the martial arts. And they whacked me. Whack, jump, kick, punch, jump, kick. No, no strategy. They got nothing to lose. I have to run. When the enemy comes against you and you realize, I look very weak now. I look very stupid now. I look like I'm a loser now. But, By the grace of God. One last scripture. Genesis chapter 32. This is Jacob. He's wrestling with an angel. Jacob was a cheater. Now he's running from his brother. He (laughs) cheat everybody. Now an angel. See, God wants to make him great. So God comes and wrestles with him. You know, sometimes we wrestle against principalities and powers, talking about demonic problems. Sometimes God comes and does the wrestling with us. <laughs> How about that? An angel comes and wrestles. 
And after wrestling for a long time, the angel says, let, let me go, the day breaks. And he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. In other words, you can pray the same prayer. I will not stop fighting this fight. I will not stop praying. I will not stop walking in my house up and down and quoting the scriptures. I will not quote and say, you said, you said, and I'm claiming your word. I will not stop doing that unless you bless me. You have that right. If more of us did that, you will be very blessed. I think C3 Clang will be very, very blessed. Yeah. We'll walk into territories and properties and two acres of land. How much is it? No problem. We'll buy it. And really, I said to my wife, I mean, while we are here in this project now, KL, I said, this is just temporal. We're moving on. I'm thinking about KL, our Clang building. And I was thinking, well, let's look for two acres of property somewhere here. Let's, let's do it. You know, people think we are mad. They're right. I'm madly in love with Jesus. I love Krang. I really love Krang Town. Cranky people live here. Useless town, the people used to say. And I think it is flooding everywhere. Oh, give me this place, Lord Jesus. I said, two acres of land. We can build nice home schools and we can, we can do youth centers. We can just do that in Jesus' name. It's too small for us. Our vision's too big. Can somebody say amen? amen. You watch out. It's going to happen. Here comes a tall woman. <laughs> he said, unless you... So the Lord said to him, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob, which means cheater. He says, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Listen, for you have struggled with God... And with men, all of us do, eh? Yes or not? We all struggle, right? With God, sometimes with God, when God tells us to do something, oh, no God, no God, then we say yes. With man, we struggle. And have prevailed. That's the key. The key there is you never give up until you bless me. So God said, now, I am entitled, I have to bless you. Because you struggle with God, and you struggle with man, and you have prevailed. You have prevailed. You have, you have prevailed. You are going to benefit from this adversary. This is what I know I said it's the last scripture, but here's another last, last scripture. Numbers 33, verse 55. I, I want you to be blessed with all these. And if you've got your time, take down these notes and underline it in your Bible. I do that. He says, but if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land before you, talking about the children of Israel, then it shall be that those whom you let remain, they will be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sight, and they will harass you in the land which you dwell. In other words, if you do not deal with some issues that you're supposed to deal with, you are always going to have your vision, your eyes impaired. You can't see what God wants you to do clearly. You're just walking around, bang, walking around, bang, walking around, bang. No direction, no vision, no possession, because you allowed some of these things to be there. How about today? We say, God, I'm going to deal with that. If it is a bad habit, if it is an addiction, if it is unforgiveness, if it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, lack of trust, lack of prayer, a very poor prayer life, I'm going to start working on some of these things. I'm going to be like Noel. I'm going to start by first putting on my shoes. Then I'm going to wear my spandex. No, I'll put my spandex on first, then wear my shoes. Then I'll open the door of my house and realize that there is a road and sunlight out there, whereas previously I would be sleeping. I realize that it's hot, the mosquitoes, and my whole body says, close the door, go back in, open a can of beer, lie down in front of the TV, and don't go out. And in fact, that's also exercise when you lift the glass and put it down. Lift the glass, see? Lift. And you find all kinds of an excuse. I would forgive my husband if he was... I would forgive my parents if they were... All kinds of mosquitoes will attack you. You've got to prevail. God is saying, I'm going to do it even if it makes me look stupid. I can imagine how foolish Noel looks in his new walking, running shoes. Brand new. Everybody on the road will realize this fella never works out. And his t 
tight spandex and his tight shirt bulging tight looks how silly he is but he's out there getting his work up at his pace you don't have to follow anybody else you don't have to run like all these other people i see some of them running you know so many kilometers makes me sick i feel like vomiting I look, some of them on the way ha, in the gym ha, ha, ha. Whoa, when they do like that i stand in front of the mirror and look at my own self but they worked up enough for them and for me <laughs> do you know what i'm saying i'm teasing no now huh? so don't get hurt with what i'm saying if you do not deal with these things let's deal with these things and get over it and say goodbye to them i don't want to live that kind of i will fight you anytime you appear i will fight you in the name of jesus nobody will see that i'm going through a battle because in front of everybody's eyes i'm smiling i'm praising the lord hello how are you great to see you in church thank you jesus oh god i praise you your grace and we're singing Wow, this guy is so free. No problem. Oh, you don't know. I'm fighting a fight and a battle. That's between me and God. And I will prevail because I want the blessing of God. Amen? What is it you need to put off and get serious about? What is it you need to really address? What are some of the things that you have allowed to be there that are an irritant in your life? It's so irritating. Uh, it's pricking you. It's holding you down. How about we say to God, God, anoint me, uh, give me the weapons to fight, put on the whole armor of God, anoint me. Remember, the greater the anointing, the greater the adversary, and the greater the victory, and the greater the blessing. Amen? Stand together, let's stand together, come. Hallelujah. Guys, let's sing a worship song together, and as we worship the Lord, listen to me, the Holy Spirit's going to start speaking to you. In fact, He already has in this service and he's saying to you about certain issues don't look at the person next to you don't ask your wife your husband to change uh, don't ask other people to adjust their behavior let's talk about you and god what are some of the enemies god wants you to overcome as we stand here and worship let's worship the lord together hallelujah
always sing that again. Just listen. How many of us would say, Lord, I trust you with all that I am? In other words, with all my weakness, I don't have a good theology. I've not been to Bible college, so I don't know much of the Bible. I only get it on Sunday or when I read it at home. But Lord, I trust you. That's all he wants you. He said, I sought for a man. I'm looking. I'm looking. God wants to use a person. Can you say to God, I trust you. You have the master plan. I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen. So many bad news in the world, but you have the master plan. I throw my life into your hands. How many of you would do that today? Lift your hands up to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as once again, we stand here as people desperate for you. We throw our lives into your hands. All our future and our plans, because you have the master plan. I trust you, oh God. Here am I. Take me just as I am with all my faults. Cleanse me of all my sin. Lord, give me strength to fight every battle, to possess the gates, to possess the gates of the enemy. The enemy are standing in the gate, waiting to hold back, waiting to push me down. But I'm ready to fight, Lord. Lift your hand if you're ready to fight. Lord, put as you put on the whole armor of God, anoint them with the power to fight the enemy in Jesus' name. We know that it is not by our strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. That when we come against generations of curses, generations of addiction, generations of all these things that have gone on in our lives, that's not us. It stops right now, right here, in the name of Jesus, in the house of God. As for me and my household, we are new creation. We are going to fight. We are saved. We are bought by the blood of Jesus. I break every curse. I reject every negativity. I say, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. That's not my family. In the name of Jesus, I'm free. In the name of Jesus, whom the Son set free. It is free indeed. In free indeed. Jesus' name. Every hand that is raised, oh God. Let the anointing come upon them, Lord. As they stand in the house of God. I pray that every adversary that you have assigned them, every adversary that has come to them, you will cause them to overcome that adversary. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit is on you. Stand there, stand there. The presence of the Holy Spirit is on you. I want to tell you something, listen carefully, you can write it down later. Your friends create your comfort, okay? Friends make you happy, family members make you happy. They are happy for you and you are happy for them. So your friends create your comfort, but your adversary creates your promotion. If you don't have an adversary, you're not going to rise up and fight something and have a testimony and have a story to tell if you run away from your problems all the time and refuse to face them you will have no story to tell you will have no testimony Jesus said you shall be my witnesses in other words you will be my witness you will tell you will tell a story your story if you don't stay and fight if you want to run then there is no victory so sometimes we want our friends and we all do to comfort us pray for us love us stand with us and we need them but it is our adversary c3 church when we face a lot of things as a church the, the best years of this church is coming because you know how to fight as well not just the pastors no pastor you pray pastor no it's not about us forget it it's about you you start owning this church you start seeing souls being saved. You start taking your connect group really, really serious. Not, not show up when you want. As I said, going to connect group, going to church is not spiritual warfare. It's the most comfortable thing you can ever do. And even that, I'm not scolding you, I'm just telling you. Even that, some of us find it difficult to do. What are you talking about fighting and taking victory in Jesus' name? So God wants us to be like Jacob he says now I you are Israel you're a man of God because you have struggled with God and struggled with man and you have prevailed I want to bless you God says 
So, Father, I pray that their hands are lifted up once again. I see mothers, single girls, women who struggle in relationships or in so many things with their emotions, with their health. Ladies, I want to commend you and thank God for you. Fight, keep fighting. Be encouraged, women, to break through. Like the woman with the issue of the blood, she pushed through until she touched the master and she was healed. Twelve years she suffered. I don't know how long many of you have suffered, but you need to push through. Girls, girls, push through. Some of the greatest anointed people in the world are women. Greatest. Some of you men, you need to really be real men. That God said, I look for a man among men. And I want to challenge you guys. We all have our battles and our moods and our struggles. You need to conquer that in the name of Jesus or it will conquer you. One day you will be known by the enemy you conquered or the enemy that conquered you. The enemy you conquered, they will say last time he was a stingy person or a, or a gambler or, or a bad tempered or an addicted person. But today he's free. He's a trophy of God's grace. So you have conquered an enemy. You will be known by that victory. Or if the enemy conquers you, then you'll say, well, he got stuck on that. He never let it go. He continued to always be angry and moody and all that. That stuck. He sunk. What could have been? So I want to encourage you. Overcome whatever you might have to overcome. Come against every adversary in the name of Jesus. Not in your own strength. Not in your own will. But in the power of God. I feel the anointing is still here. Setting some of us free. Bringing us to a place of victory. In Jesus name. Holy Spirit of God. Come Holy Spirit of God. Can you just stay in the presence of God? Please no distraction. Everybody is an anointing here. Holy Spirit of God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Raise up men and women strong. Strong men and women in Jesus' name. Strong men and women in Jesus' name. Strong families. Strong marriages. Strong families. Strong bodies. Healthy bodies. Healthy minds. Strong Christians in our church in Jesus' name. Raise them up in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, raise him up. In the name of Jesus. I trust in you with all I am. I know
Wonderful. Praise God. The kids are here. Let's have one celebration song and then have your refreshments. Thank you all for being here. Looking forward. Don't forget, bring somebody next week. He's going to be praying for people, praying for the sick. And uh, Pastor Chris, uh, uh, Pastor Eric will be here. And so make sure you bring someone with you. It's going to be a wonderful time. Amen. God bless you.